the power control unit is looking at the engine, it's looking at the motor, it's trying to figure out how we are driving around. So this all started with a discussion with my kids. We were in an electric car and they asked me why are more cars not like this because we don't have the infrastructure yet. So the actual intelligent answer for most of the world right now is the hybrids, which is a combination of the gas engine and the electric engine. And so my kids asked me, why were we not testing more hybrids then? So this is the Lexus NX 300H, H for hybrid. This is how we're going to explain how everything works and why we think it's a good system. We're driving around in a Lexus NX, which I actually really, really like. Basically, we're driving the hybrid around and the point is that it's a seamless thing. We're really showing what happens in driving. <laughs> One thing, this has no charging cord. You don't have to plug it in. It is a self-charging system. The battery is charged by the gas engine and the power is charged by the brakes. Now there are plug-in hybrids and there's nothing that negative about them other than people aren't actually using them because they are finding out they don't need to because the self-charging system works. Right now, in our world, in this country, this system is what makes sense to us and we will show you why. The wider display is there at the front in between the two passengers, it's, it's in the console. There's a smaller one, more easy to see to the driver, right here. So it gives us a quicker idea, but the one over here is actually far more detailed. How does that work? The brains of the car is the power control unit, which we are giving the nickname Brian. And Brian, the power control unit, tells the car what to do. It's engine giving power to the battery. Charging the battery. Okay, and now we're in traffic, and the engine is powering the battery. Now the battery is powering the motor and the wheels. So now we're moving forward with the new thing. You can't really tell. Tell the world what's going on, Brian. So the engine can do both. It can charge the battery and send power to the motor. Yes. It was doing... The engine is right now, The this red thing is showing that the engine is giving power. Okay, there. Yeah. That's, you know, it's actually quite interesting. And look at where the battery is right now. Yeah. So the battery is, is not it's low, yep. but it's like at uh, like three eight. Eight. Yeah. Right now we're not moving, so everything, I guess it just goes by nature to the electric motor first, the first mm -hmm. electric motor in the front. So it's just quiet right now, nothing's going on. Uh, the battery is showing, but it's not putting anything to any of the motors. We're about to get off the brakes and you'll see what happens. There you go. The engine oh, just, yep. just kicked in. Uh, that's a fun, but look, it's now at two eighths. It's, it's only got two bars left of power, so it might be skewing towards... Uh, Using the engine yeah. now. It's constantly shifting from one mode to the other. It's constantly charging or supplying power. The power control unit is looking at the engine, it's looking at the motor, it's looking at the battery, it's looking at the tires, it's looking at everything. It's trying to figure out how we are driving around. So it will tell the car, for example, now you only use the gasoline engine, or now you only use the electric motor, or now you use a combination, or now we're gonna turn on the gasoline engine to put power in the battery. Or the power control unit will tell the system to feed the battery with the brakes. This is what they call regenerative braking. So when you're braking the car, you're actually using that energy. It's showing when it's using regenerative braking. Let's try and do it there. It's regenerative now. So every time we brake, the blue lines go there, let's see. All things considered, it's actually an extremely efficient use of power across the board. End result is it is a seamless transition. When we accelerate with this car, we're gonna have the benefit of the instant power of the electric combined with a fairly strong gasoline engine. And again, it's a power control unit that yeah, decides. It's a power control yeah. unit that decides all that. Plus, depending on the car, you have the ability to choose sport mode or eco mm. mode or luxury mode. The electric is there to support what you want, which will be power. That burst of acceleration was still just electric motor. In this conversation, we've now moved to four of the battery levels. We're now wow. at four, and we were just at two a second ago. Yep. So the uh, car is being charged. charged by the motor sometimes, but by the regenerative braking very often. So it's actually surprisingly efficient. When you step on the throttle harder than usual, does the motor kick into... Ah, uh, let's find out. Let's do it now. Okay. It does. One thing you don't remember, there are 8 million plus Toyota Lexus hybrids on the road. They've been around for a while. We're not noticing them anymore because they're just 
all over the place. You would not know if this was an electric unless you were inside and the world was quiet for you. So this is a compromise on one hand, yes. On the other hand, unless the Philippines puts in electrical systems in the next two years, we're gonna have this system for the next 20 years. So anyway, yeah, so there, so we were discussing that with my kids. After that long conversation, I said, okay, now that you know the differences, what should we be looking at for our next car? And I waited while I thought they were thinking. And it turns out they fell asleep. <laughs> so I wasn't as enthralling as I thought yeah. I was. Or the car was just really quiet. Cold. Yeah. And, uh, so 